Well, this past wheat harvest, one of the members of the Oklahoma Agricultural Leadership Program invited us to join them as they harvested their wheat. Being an Oklahoma wheat farmer is never easy, but for Fairview's Clinton and Jessica Wilcox, they wouldn't have it any other way. And it's just an amazing feeling to, to plant it, take care of it, put it back in the bin, um, help feed people, take care of the world. I love it. I absolutely love the challenge of uh, growing a good crop and, and being the best I can be and doing the most I can do with what God's given us. And some years are more challenging than most. If we had just had you know, three more inches of rain, which isn't a lot at all, you know, normally we'd have way more than that, we would have such a better crop. That's just part of farming in western Oklahoma from what, everything I've gathered. You know, you're going to have good years, you're going to have bad years, and you know, and where I grew up, we fight floods and the river all the time, and out here we fight, we fight lack of lack of water. This year, drought. Next year, who knows? But good year or bad, they have each other. That's a very enjoyable part of my part of my job. Um, we get to work together. It's a give and take deal. Uh, there's all the time she's on the combine, halfway across the field right now, and. Uh, we were both in the office this morning taking care of crop insurance, and we both got our phones on us, but we're both out here taking care of getting wheat out of the field. Uh, we make a really good team, both in the insurance business and uh, in life and, in, and um, in our farm. It's kind of difficult having two agronomists under the same household every now and then, but it makes for an interesting conversation. I was always on a tractor growing up, so Clint, I think he married me just because I was cheap labor and already trained. <laughs> so Jessica, was there ever a time that you ever considered not being a farmer? Not really, no. I was wanting to be a farmer from the day I was born. I learned to walk in a cornfield, and uh, now I'm walking in wheat fields. Yeah. Now, we, we got a glimpse into your life. We were there over a day and then o over an evening period. What's life like down on the farm? Well, uh, this year it's a little tight. You know, um, our yields were a little low and prices were good, thankfully. Uh, but, you know, it's, it's still um, a life that we love to live. And uh, at the end of the day, it's our business, one of our businesses we operate. So uh, we'll hope for better luck next year and prepare for, you know, hopefully, uh, the, hopefully not the worst. But, you know, it's like they had mentioned earlier with the first vacation. We, Keep going, keep doing it. And look for, look for better times next year. Absolutely. It's always maybe next year, right? Now, I, I want to get the perspective of a, a couple of wheat guys. We have two, two different people that are wheat specialists, one from university per, university perspective, another from commercially. Uh, we are seeing just larger and larger wheat acreages. Is that a trend we can expect to continue? I'd say absolutely. What we're doing is, uh, as a society as a whole, we're always pushing efficiencies. We're pushing environmental and economic efficiencies, and you can't do that on small scale. I mean, you can't have efficient new equipment that has that better fuel economy, that has that new carbon-safe footprint. You can't do that on 150 acres. So we look at the Wilcox family. They can farm three times as much as Clint's uh, grandfather could when he started farming because of efficiency. We change from conventional tillage. You can move a lot more acres, cover a lot more acres, with a sprayer than you could with an eight rope, eight bottom plow. And that means you can cover more, you can buy better equipment, so you're more efficient in both fuel, your, your inputs as far as nutrients, and your outputs. And if you wanna make it, unless you stick in a uh, niche market where you have something, you're doing something special, you need to get larger. So all the young producers, if they're in their, their 20s or 30s right now, they're farming three times as much as their grandfathers because that's how you have to. Profit margins are absolutely tight. So, you know, you have to have more acres to make that margin. Okay. Brian, I want to ask, ask you, is technology our friend or our foe when it comes to? Oh, it's definitely our friend. Technology from fertilizer efficiency using GPS systems to apply fertilizer to actually taking readings in a field and applying fertilizer and variable rate across a field and small sections instead of broadcasting the same amount over the whole acreage. So technology is definitely our friend from efficiency standpoint, both in dollars and for the crop. 
uh, a farmer is able to fertilize more, not uniform, but have more uniform yields through variable fertilization. Um, same way with pesticides and herbicides through GPS guidance and so forth, and uh, using yield monitors in the combines. All that technology is somewhat expensive, but if you really put a pencil to it, it pays off in just very short years. Now, Blay, you work with the Oklahoma Department of Agriculture, Food and Forestry, and we, we've seen bigger farms and then a lot of smaller farms that kind of go into that, what I call almost a hobby category, but it's that mid-sized farmer. What's the future there? I don't know that there is a significant future for our mid-sized farmer, as was mentioned earlier, unless they have a particular niche that they can really focus on. It's very difficult um, to make it. We have some producers who maybe are focusing on organic or have some other areas that they can really generate some additional income, um, but a lot of farmers have to make the decision to either get bigger or have an additional source of income to continue with their operations. Yeah, and, and bringing in things, and uh, we've done Done stories with you about this about agritainment and, and, and you know everything from tourism to uh, like you said niche markets most definitely the best thing about our ag producers is the majority of them are great entrepreneurs um, they're definitely optimist uh, they'll try things be it a new technology new equipment um, they'll try to have people come in and see them working cows something like that so they're usually up for trying something maybe different that they have done in the past if they feel like they can justify it as additional income to their operation. And Blaine said a very important word that I want to throw out. I want to get your opinion. Entrepreneurship. I see that every time when I go outside the city lights. How important is entrepreneurship in being successful in rural Oklahoma? I think it's critical. Um, my husband and I, uh, we farm. We have a small uh, cow-calf operation. And um, he actually came, he was a crop duster and sold out of that business and we were looking at how to diversify our income and increase our income. And so we actually have started several businesses and one of them was a lawn spraying business. Um, you know, he already had his commercial license so we went, went into that and um, was able to get into a, an area where we weren't necessarily 100% determined with the weather because in agriculture we're so, de we're so uh, dependent on moisture I mean, I'll say weather, but it's a lot of it is moisture. And right now we're seeing a big um, deficiency in that area. But um, being able to look and see what's needed, I mean, I think we're, we're problem solvers and that's what we look in our small communities and look for opportunities where we can uh, provide a service that's maybe not already there and also increase our income that way as well. I'd add also it's been a really neat change in the last decade to watch the producers, whether it's animal uh, or, or crop producers, they've gone from just growing something to actually marketing now. Marketing is such a large part of what the average producer does, and that's changed in the last probably even five or three or four years. It's really big now, and that's the good ones, the good entrepreneurs are marketing their crops. They go out and find a place, they mark their livestock, they market their, their animals to make it. If they don't do that, they aren't making it anymore. And the same thing with the, the inputs, Rob. The farmers are larger now and they're able to take on inputs in larger quantities and therefore they demand a lower price and service is it's taking a different face in agriculture in how the, the farmers are operating and how they purchase goods that they're going to consume, whether it's fuel, fertilizer, pesticides, or machinery. When we return, we take a look at the economics down on the farm. <laughs> 